Hey there channel, welcome back. My name's Chris, and today I've got an interesting one. Last week, or maybe I guess it was a week and a half ago now, I got called by a speed shop in Michigan that is doing a build for a truck and they want to control the Borg Warner 4419 transfer case in the vehicle. They want to get rid of the existing controller and do something custom and as a switch, you know, uh, they want to either use the factory one or something else. At any rate, they want to get rid of the controller. Now, the transfer case, for those of you who don't know, is simply the thing that shifts a vehicle from two-wheel drive to four-wheel drive. Usually they have two high, four high, four low, and neutral. So I've got the problem of I want to drive this from uh, my own code. The speed shop provided me with a schematic for this vehicle. You can see here, we've got the transfer case has a connector on it. And so it's got a motor. Basically, it's just a DC motor that drives the gearing. And then it has four position switches, which tell it what position it's currently in. So it can actually close any one of these four or it can close none of them. So if it's in between gears, none of them will be closed. It also has this clutch solenoid that can be activated or deactivated. Right now, we're not gonna worry too much about that. They're not sure if they're going to use it. Adding a, an output to drive that isn't too difficult. And then you can see these all just come up into this transfer case control module, this TCCM here. Um, and that is the thing that we're going to get rid of. We're going to replace this control module with something else that connects to the transfer case and drives it into a gear and gives you an indicator of what gear you're in. So how are we gonna do this in code? Or really, how are we going to do this with our own microcontroller? Let's take a look. Since I don't have a 4419 just laying around, I need something that I can use as a surrogate for that, something that I can drive and use to test my code and to make sure everything works. So I went, you know, dug around on my shelves and I found a windshield wiper motor that I was originally going to use, and I may still, as the auto feed for the X axis on my mill. I just never got around to actually putting it in, but the nice thing is I had a wiper motor, so it's a DC motor just laying around. I uh, did some CAD work and basically I designed the head of it. So this is the head. The canister of the actual motor comes off of here. I didn't CAD that in because it's really not all that important. The nice thing is this thing has a gear reduction to this gear here. So what I did was I then designed on that basically a rack so that when this gear turns, this rack moves in this uh, picture left and right, right? So then I designed a seat for it like this, and then you can put in a limit switch. So this rounded part closes this switch, and then as we drive this uh, wiper motor, this rack will push over into uh, one of the four switches. And so that'll close those switches. So you can see if we put a few of them in here, this is what it looks like. I didn't color them or anything, but that gives you an idea of kind of the general idea and then a cap to squeeze it all together. So after doing all of the CAD work, spent some time doing prints and refining it, and this is what I came up with. So we've got the wiper motor here and it drives this rack. Right now it's locked because the design of this, this is a gear reduction, so I can't actually turn this spur gear. But when the spur gear rotates, this moves and it'll move across and close these switches. So right now I'll call this position zero. Maybe that's four low. And then, you know, we'd go four low, neutral, four high, two high or whatever. We'll worry about that later. But what I've got is I have designed this. So we now have a surrogate for all intents and purposes, should behave just like the transfer case. I'll actually put a picture of the transfer case down in the corner that will show you. You can see on it, it's got the uh, canister for the motor. 
basically it is this exact same thing, but it's just built internally. To drive this, we're going to use automotive voltage. It's a 12 volt system, but if you've worked on cars, you know that it's extremely rare to ever see 12 volts except on the way up and the way back down. They usually run at around 13-ish volts, 13 and a half, whatever. They can go up, they can go down, it floats around. That's actually not terribly important on this other than we know that our microcontroller can't take that. So we'll have to do some power supply conditioning for the microcontroller. The output of the microcontroller we're going to run through probably some MOSFETs and those will drive coils on standard automotive relays. It's important to me to use a standard automotive relay here to drive these because if something goes bad, you can just go to an automotive store and buy one of these. The idea here is we've got this motor takes in, uh, you know, vehicle voltage. So let's call it positive and then ground on two pins. So we've got two pins here. And the direction of the motor is controlled by which one is positive. If you have positive on let's call them pin one and two. If you have positive on pin one, it goes one direction. If you have positive on the other, it goes the other direction. The important thing is it has to have a differential voltage. So one has to be uh, ground and one positive. So using two different relays, we actually get four bits of information and we have three states for this. That's what we need. Off, so don't move at all or move in the you know, positive direction and negative direction. So let's take a look at how you wire that up real quick because it's, it's kind of interesting and it's actually really important for what we're doing here. So if you've got your motor and it's got two legs on it, if we give it positive here and negative here, it's going to say drive in one direction. If we switch it so that's positive and this is negative, it will actually drive in the other direction. And then if you actually connect both to ground or both to positive, so there's no differential between the two, the motor will be stopped. So really we have clockwise, counterclockwise, uh, stopped and stopped. Those are our four conditions, right? So if we have our two relays, so let's say relay one, so this is the relay here and the coil is assumed. So we've got a coil that connects in and then we've got our other relay here. So this is our other relay and it's got a coil. So we can turn this from uh, position A to B and let's say we hook this to plus and this to the ground plus and ground. So right now, if both of them are, let's call this in the on position, doesn't really matter. We can invert the logic, but the way that these are right now, we have a plus plus condition and plus plus is going to give us a stop, right? So really, if we have plus plus stop, minus minus stop, plus minus Let's just call it clockwise. I don't know. Uh, we'll have to take a look and minus plus would be counterclockwise. The key here is we can turn on one of these to change our behavior or turn it you know, off and the other one on so we can toggle it to get these four states. So that's what we're going to build with some relays and probably MOSFETs again. So let's go take a look at that. After doing a little bit of work with both the schematic and solder, I ended up only going with a transistor instead of a MOSFET. It works just fine. So what I've got here is this is the transistor and then I've got a flyback diode on the relay. So this is really the four pins of the relay connector, 85, 6, 7, and 30. So 85 and 86 are the ones that go across the coil to energize it. One side you can see just goes up to 12 volts. Really it's the uh, vehicle bus voltage. And then the other one goes into the transistor and then goes to ground. 
and then this is connected to the microcontroller here and then we've got two of them one for each relay control so here's the other one it's just a mirror of this and then the outputs so when the coil is closed it connects 87 to 30 this is again that connector on the relay so 87 transmits this 12 volt power out and then these go to the connector for the motor as always these schematics will be available in the public repository i'll put a link to that down in the description and here's just my simple bench prototype really we've got the transistors here and this is the stuff that we're looking at in that schematic so this is our 12 volt vehicle bus system and then two of these are for one relay and the other two are for the other relay so this is the 85 and 86 for relay one 85 86 for relay two you can see the diodes are right here so this is really all of the connectivity for it and then this connects up to this uh, f7 feather microcontroller if you're curious about what's going on over here this connector is the input from the switches to detect what gear we're in and then this is just the output of 5 volt and in fact that is on the schematic here so this is the output of the 5 volt which is this TC5V so transfer case 5 volt and then it goes to some limit switches and each one of those come back in and these are just digital inputs so it comes into this screw terminal and then loops over and then these go through to the inputs on this microcontroller i don't know that it makes a whole lot of sense looking at it like this but this is the wiring harness so here's one of the relays and really they come in this is the 12 volt system input you can see it's coming into the relays here. This is the output to the motor. Then here is the connector that connects back to the microcontroller here. So these connect together. And then again, this is off that 12 volt. So then this connects into that 12 volt. And this is what it looks like when it's running. Right now it's just toggling back and forth, clockwise and counterclockwise. We'll take a look at the code for this and these switches in another video, but that's it for today. Thanks for watching.